Okay, so I'm going to take a slightly different tack. Um, I really want to draw from what Professor Goldsmith had to say, probably just on two points. One is the issue of bravery, because I think um, Professor Goldsmith himself has evidence acts of bravery, speaking on the topics that he has from the position that he holds. And so I think there's much to be said about that. And the second theme that I want to pick up from him is this issue that he, I'm very also interested in the notion of balance, but how is the balance drawn and what are we balancing, which is Rebecca's really picked up as well. And so I would like to think about that in the context of how we learn to live as fully realised individuals in the internet age. And so I'll, I'll draw on a couple of the other things that we talked about in the earlier weeks. So then just firstly, the issue of bravery. I think the thing that I would like to emphasise from the weeks uh, we looked at in the, in the early material was the issue of bravery. And so for me, um, Edward Snowden really started a conversation for us that we didn't even know that we were meant to have. So he removed the veil of secrecy from all of these activities. And without Snowden, and without his willingness to sacrifice himself to, to bring us those revelations, we would have lived quite happily, I think, in ignorance. And this is probably the challenge that you know, we've all encountered during this, this course is, we didn't know these things were going on, they were going on, but we didn't know. And so now we are, thanks to Snowden, uh, stuck with that knowledge. So I think we have a uh, moral imperative to continue that conversation. And I think even if we don't always agree about what the responses will be, I think we agree that it's a conversation that we need to have. So I think we need to use the tools that we've been given to put that conversation out there. And I would also like at, to acknowledge, I think at this point, what I perceive as the bravery of, of people like Chelsea Manning, who who really was brave enough again to put her opinions out there, um, to put the material out there so it could be analysed. And you have people like uh, Julian Assange who have used the internet as a platform to begin these conversations. Now, agree or disagree, I think the difference is that the internet has made those conversations possible. We now have access to that information. And I think the second really important point uh, and something that really resonated with me from what Edward Snowden said was his belief that he is a child of the internet. He is a, he's a creature of the internet age and that the internet itself is something that is really worth fighting for. It is something unique. And in a very short time, we have come to take it for granted. And of course, as regulators, as lawyers, often our first instinct with respect to anything is to control it. You know, that, that we find things that are uncontrolled and unregulated quite difficult to manage. And so part of the thing that we're struggling with is, is with governments and with corporations saying, well, how can we better control this thing? And it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then you move into a situation of cyber warfare where you have struggles to and fro to control those domains. So I think what is really interesting in that context is to take one step aside and to listen to people like Professor Gabriella Coleman and her insights into what else the internet can be used for. So the notion of cyber democracy, the notion of cyber participation. And I think that what I would like to stress is to build on those two themes and to call for a fully informed and respectful consideration by regulators and lawmakers to looking at the internet as the platform that it, that it truly is. I mean, what is it that disturbs people about the collection of metadata is probably largely the fact that they don't know what is being gathered about them and they 
didn't know that they had a problem until they heard that this information was being gathered. So we have to learn to deal with that knowledge and we have to come to some conclusions as a society as how we are going to move on and to live in that internet age in a way that is respectful and empowering and to really fulfil all the promises of the early internet as that great facilitator of connectivity and freedom of expression and allowing people to fully realise who they are as human beings because after all that is really what the internet really should be able to serve. So I think that these are all conversations that form part of that sort of overarching issue. So I really hope that we've all been able to uh, provide you with the knowledge and the tools to make further inquiries about how you are going to fit in with, with that domain, that landscape.